I'm Scott L. Miller. It's the 11th of December, 2023. This is my vlog of daily life. Living in Leon, Nicaragua. I'm still pretty sick with this persistent cough that I've had for a while, so I apologize. I've not been able to get out and go lots of interesting places. We did do the Ipico yesterday, which I actually filmed several days before I'm recording this. I've been sick for two to three weeks. Uh, and for the most part, I'm trying to rest a lot and stay home, play a lot of video games with the kids. So I haven't been doing a lot of shorts and I've been keeping the episodes on the short side. So I apologize for that. I'm starting, I think, to feel like I'm making progress on whatever this is that I have. Uh, I feel a bit better today, but yesterday I felt really badly. So who knows, right? But I'm going to do my best to get out and get some footage. I really am hoping to get up to Madagalpa soon and do an interview with Scott Moore before he takes off for uh, points north in Guatemala. I've been wanting to to interview him for months and we have not been able to do that so hopefully I'm going to be able to pull that off in the uh, very upcoming time frame but today we're going to be talking about the new American dream as I saw it listed on CNN travel we're gonna to get to that right after the bump CNN Travel, there's a couple travel magazines online that I do uh, subscribe to, Travel and Leisure, uh, Condé Nast, uh, CNN Travel, just because I kind of like to keep up with what travel trends are going on worldwide. I find travel very interesting, and I had a bit of a serious camera malfunction, and by serious camera malfunction, I mean I hit stop when I meant to hit start and missed a segment of my recordings. So I'm doing this a little bit later when I did all my uploads and realized this was missing. So I was on my Apple News feed, and CNN Travel had this article uh, with the headline that the new American dream is leaving America. And I thought this was actually a really interesting topic and important. And it hit me that it really seems true. My anecdotal evidence of my life in America and everyone that I know there, this fits really closely. And I think that it's worth uh, discussing. So we are going to tackle that today. So for a lot of people, getting out and traveling is the dream. And so, and, and traveling just around your own country doesn't really cut it. That's just too familiar. It's too close to home. It's too easy. What they want is adventure. What they want is challenge. What they want is to explore and experience more and more. And the birds are fantastic today. This is great. I'm actually getting to film pretty early in the morning, which I don't often get to do, so it's very nice. I'm filming this actually on Sunday morning, so if you're watching this on the day it releases, it's just 24 hours before. So you've really come to realize that for a lot of people, yes, there's some for whom the American dream is still the white picket fence and staying in your hometown and, you know, having this upward mobility without really going uh, too far afield. But for an awful lot of people, and the majority of people that I know for sure, what they dream about in their going to work every day, going to the office, trying to make a living, their dream is to save up enough both time off and money to be able to leave wherever they live and go explore the world. And, and they're isolated generally to doing this in these very small increments, a week here, two weeks there. Uh, the average American gets such a small amount of time for vacation that the idea of traveling abroad is very difficult. Uh, it's hard to get enough time. So for example, if you're gonna go to Europe, that's basically an entire day of travel to get to Europe, an entire day of travel to get back, and generally at least one day for jet lag. And because you travel so infrequently as Americans, little things like going to the airport, jet lag, uh, going to a place with foreign currency, foreign language, those things tend to be much bigger barriers mentally and something that you're much less experienced with. So you tend to put in more time being uh, in the process of adapting to those basic bits of travel rather than getting there and enjoying it. If you're a, if you're a seasoned traveler, the idea of getting up late, rushing to the airport, knowing exactly how much time to give yourself to be comfortable, getting on a plane, getting to Europe, being able to get off and immediately go do things, dealing with your your sleep deprivation really well. You may be able to do those things and minimize the amount of time that goes into the logistics of getting to a foreign country. And you may be able to say, take one week and actually get five real functional days in a foreign country out of it. But a non-season traveler might be, might be struggling to get three or four days out of that same trip. And so a lot of Americans, given that 
international travel is not something that's heavily promoted and taught and encouraged, uh, and that their logistics are so challenging for that because of the way that, that office work generally is. I mean, for myself, I managed to go 12 years at one stretch of my life without ever getting an actual vacation from work. I had some holidays, I did some travel when I could between things, but it was all like, here's a Thanksgiving and our Friday was work from home and so I was able to travel somewhere or I traveled for work or whatever, but it was never actually getting time off. 12 years, that's an incredible stretch to never have an actual vacation. Um, and I should say, other than my honeymoon, I did get my honeymoon during that stretch. Um, so there's one vacation, but it was a very special thing. Um, and so normal vacations are relatively rare. Of course, most Americans have much more than that, but they don't have what most people in the world are used to as vacations. They also don't get quite as many holidays in many cases. Not that there's, you know, the Americans tend to get Get 10 to 11. Um, most places tend to get more like, I think, 12 to 14. It's not a ton more, but it's definitely noticeable when it's your time off throughout the year. So because of this, Americans have a tendency to fantasize about being able to travel in a way that most people simply, if they want to, do travel. Or if you're from someplace like Nicaragua, your challenges are very different. You may have no problem getting the time off. You may feel very comfortable going to another country, but having the financial resources to do it can be very challenging. That said, in people I know in Nicaragua, and this includes a lot of people who are quite poor, uh, those that never travel tend to never travel. They'll, they will say things like, I've never been farther than you know 50 miles or you know, 80 kilometers from the town that I grew up in. We know a lot of people like that. They never go past Managua and only go to Managua once or twice in their lives when they have to do something very important, you know, with paperwork, government, something like that. Uh, maybe they have family, they'll have a death in the family, and they'll travel for an hour or two on a bus. And those are the limits of their travel. They never go farther than that. Uh, so that's one group. And, and often they wish they could go farther. And it's just, it's just impractical when the fin finances are so tight. But those that have just a little bit more than that, routinely, we see them jumping on planes and heading all over the world whenever they can. Uh, there's a a uh, certain cultural affinity for travel here and in, and in many places that are not the U.S. that makes it when you have enough financial resources or access to someone uh, to get you tickets to go somewhere that, that you will do so. And so we'll see people from here traveling to Europe, I feel, with far fewer financial resources with much greater uh, frequency than uh, people we know in the United States. It's really interesting to see how prioritized just general travel is. However, we see much less of people moving abroad outside of people moving for work. That is a really big factor here. But for people who are just moving because they want to explore the world, we see a lot of travel, but not a lot of movement. Whereas from the United States, we see the opposite, less travel and a lot of movement. People are looking to get out and explore the world. So it's interesting to see that it, it really does seem to be the majority of Americans, and I'm sure this is true for Canadians and uh, much less so for Europeans because they have a very different connection with the world. But for Americans, this dream of being able to go other places and to spend real time other places is such a pipe dream or appears to be, even though it's relatively accessible for Americans, it feels so out of reach that Americans tend to spend an inordinate amount of time dreaming about being able to travel and very little time actually doing it. It's one of the reasons why travel magazines are so popular in the United States. People spend more time reading about travel than actually going. People focus on travel books and on travel magazines and on travel TV shows like this one, which is fantastic. Thank you for your support. But instead of just hopping on a plane and going, um, and this happened to us in 2011, we spent an entire summer dreaming about a trip going to Europe. Now, this was beneficial. We had a lot of work I had to do. It was difficult for us to go. And we did use that time to enact a two-month grand tour of Europe in 2012. This was a pretty good use of our time, but we spent 2011, if you were to ask my wife and I to define what made 2011 uh, a big year, of course, the, the birth of our youngest daughter, which is why we didn't travel that year, was the biggest thing. But the second biggest thing is we spent an inordinate amount of her early childhood when she was too small to do anything, right, when you're just coddling a baby, uh, was watching travel shows and looking at maps and discussing where we would go when she was old enough uh, in in. 2012 at 13 months old, uh, where we were going to go in Europe and all those things. And so we did a, this crazy amount of planning because it was our big chance. This was the break of my 12-year no vacation stint. And so it was, it was a really big deal. 
Um, and, and that's something that I think most people around the world don't do. And for Americans, it really is the dream. And so what is, okay, so this is an analysis, right? There, there really is, I think, this American dream of wanting to see the world, of wanting to maybe travel, maybe move abroad, or maybe combine the two, right? Digital nomadry uh, or, or something similar, or just taking some portion of your life to go live abroad and try working locally, working remotely, whatever, right? But um, Americans, I think, view so much of the world as uh, tropical paradise or Mediterranean dream, or they want to try the food. There's so many things that is tough to get in America, like fresh food, right? Things that have not been genetically modified, things that are not heavily processed. It's really difficult to get. And the cost of everything is so high. Being able to go to someplace like Italy and have healthy food at reasonable prices, that alone, it sounds like such an impossible dream. It actually sounds like a fantasy world. How can a place as beautiful as Italy have food that's affordable and housing that's affordable? Like that's crazy, it can't really happen. And yet it's there and people who go immediately discover it. And it's this dream come true. And if, especially if you have a remote job, you're in great shape because you can't just go to Italy and work, but you can definitely save up and go if that's what you want to do. That, that exists somewhere is so foreign to Americans that the idea that you could do it feels impossible. So what is what what does this bring us to, right? So we have this incredible dream. We know that that's true, or we assume that it's true. The thing that I want to say is Americans and Canadians and others who have this really need to stop and think, this is something I can do. One of the things that makes America so interesting compared to the rest of the world is just how easily Americans can travel if that's what they decide to do. Whether it's simply because we have more financial resources than most people, because we have a really powerful passport that needs very few visas, because we are geographically located not that far from a great number of things. Yes, there are places that are better. If you want to travel from France, for example, that's you've got a lot of places you can go really quickly. So the U.S. isn't the best for that, but it's, it's not bad. From the United States, Western Europe is only several hours away. Mexico is very close. Central America is just a few hours. South America is not as bad as it seems. Uh, and then, of course, you can go to Asia, depending on where you're at in the United States. If you live on the West Coast, getting to Asia is still pretty far, but it's doable. And of course, Canada is always an option, but is not really the same. We all know, right? But if you do want to go to Canada, Going to some place like Quebec or Montreal does give you a pretty exotic experience. Even PEI and Nova Scotia are going to be quite a bit different than what you're used to in the United States. So there are options if you need to ease into it or you just don't have a lot of time. But as Americans or as Canadians, given the financial resources that we almost always have, it may feel like travel like moving abroad, like being a digital nomad is so hard and we start to dream about it. But it's not as hard as it seems. It feels hard. Everything about our culture is designed to make it feel hard, whether designed intentionally or just it just ends up that way. But it is very, very strong in the consciousness of North Americans that traveling and living abroad is inaccessible, that it is something that some, some really lucky few are able to do. And the reality is it's that a, a lucky few make the leap, a lucky few make the decision, a lucky few figure out how easy and accessible it is and make it happen. Uh, people like me, right? And, and it took me a long time of having this American dream of living abroad before I finally said, I'm gonna do it, I don't care how hard it is. And then I did it and it wasn't hard at all. In fact, and this is not gonna be true for everyone, but for us, it was so easy to live abroad that it became cheaper and easier to live outside the United States than in it. A lot of people are going to find that the opposite. A lot of people are going to be like, there's so much to learn. There's so, you know, whether it's language or currency or culture or travel logistics or needing to get back to things in the United States all the time, whatever. There's definitely things that may make living abroad a challenge for you, an effort for you. But for us who thought, like many of you do, that it would be really hard. We thought that there was some barrier, that there was a reason why people didn't just do it. And when we got out there and did it, we said, wow, this is one, so fantastic. Now, of course, we did lots of research. We picked great places. We got super lucky with Kenyar in, in España as our, our first place that we went, and everything just fell into place, and it was absolutely magical and fantastic and low cost, and, and everything worked out. 
for what, almost everything. It was, re it was really smooth. And, and we did that. And it was like, everything was so easy. Everything was so approachable. There wasn't any of these big barriers that made it hard. It was just the unknown. It was just the fear. It was just this deep cultural belief that leaving is, is this really hard thing to do. And, and I think a lot of countries, a lot of cultures have this advantage of not feeling that way. And it makes it so much easier for them to just pack up and go when they have the resources to do so. Now, of course, a huge number of people that you can't just take your job with you. So that's something you have to figure out. And everybody has to figure out their own thing. And you can't just ask me, as we've talked about, hey, Scott, where's this magic just go get a job online thing? I don't know. I don't know what you're qualified to do. Jobs aren't that easy, right? You have to do some amount of research as to what you're qualified to do, what you can do, how much you're going to need to live abroad. Can you do your current job abroad? All kinds of things, right? It, it Same as if you were not looking for remote work. You just want a job. I don't know what job you can do, right? If you said, Scott, I want to be an employed American. What job should I take? I have no idea. That's what it's like asking me about remote work. Remote work is not some magic one job fits all thing. It is the entire world of work that exists normally just remote. So you need to have the same skills, experience, drive, all that, and find a job the same as you would if you weren't remote. So, and it's just a subset of normal work because tons of Americans work remotely without leaving the United States. They still exist. Those jobs are still just a part of the normal workforce before you left. So the fact that you're leaving has nothing to do with it, right? It's still, you just need remote work. So that, that is a challenge. Or maybe you're going to work for yourself, or maybe you're going to have passive income, or maybe you're going to save up and do it. That's fine too. And for a lot of people, it's actually not that hard. You, you get this feeling like, well, how am I going to afford to live? And what you're really going to do, and if you're 20, this is gonna be really hard. But if you're 50, you may be able to look at moving abroad as simply moving your retirement up 17 years and saying, well, in the United States, I was gonna to have to make it to 67 and I would have this huge nest egg and that would allow me to live every month paying American rent, American groceries, all those things. And this one, one fly that won't leave my ear. And, and if you look at moving abroad, Nicaragua being an extreme example of how much you can lower your cost, suddenly the amount of money you had saved up by the age of maybe 50 might be enough for you to retire, maybe even at 45. And a lot of people do. 45 is like the magic number where even Nicaragua is like, yeah, 45 is the retirement number. That's the retirement number here. And it's the retirement number for people coming from abroad. You may have enough saved up by 45 that you could come down here and live as well or better here in Nicaragua, retired in your 40s, as you would be able to do retiring closer to your 70s in the United States. That's a really big deal. And it also means that should anything go wrong, you have another 22 years, using 45 and 67 as the numbers, to, if you ever need to, work again, whether it's invest and start a business, uh, whether it's working online part time, whether it's taking a lower paying remote job, whether it's starting your own business of some sort online, like like you could start a business locally, you could start a business remotely, and it depends where you are, right? Nicaragua, you have one set of limitations. If you live in a different country, you may be able to uh, take a local job, right? That's, that's very feasible in a lot of countries. So you have all this flexibility to potentially protect against what feels like the risk of retiring early. I retired quite early uh, at 39, and we ran into some, some bumps along the way, and I came back to work. And now I'm working on creating a more flexible work environment that meets my needs even better. But that was something that we were able to do at that point. It ended up not working out, but the flexibility of being able to go back to work was there. And after a few years, that's what we did, and it worked out just fine. So those kinds of things often feel so hard, but you can almost certainly do it. If you are going to make the decision to make your life the American dream, to actually realize that dream for the majority, it's within your grasp, almost certainly. It's so easy. It's so affordable. You have a lot of decisions to make, a lot of choices to make. You have to figure some things out, but you can almost certainly begin the process immediately. There's no need to be like, well, when I'm older, when I'm sure you have little kids and they're in school, maybe you need to wait that out. There's, there's things in life that are going to make you want to consider waiting. But even for people with kids, that is something you should really 
kick around. Is there a benefit to your kids having a multicultural background, a multinational background? Is there a benefit to uh, the cost savings, to their long term? Well, you know, our kids thought they were going to move back to America. And once they lived abroad, they said, no, they, there's other places they want to live more. They got that exposure as children. They're not going to have to go find that exposure as adults and lose 10 or 20 years getting trapped in the American cycles of debt and, and inability to f feel like they can move abroad. Instead, they feel comfortable moving abroad at the drop of a hat and already know a bunch of things about where they want to be, where they don't want to be, and can make much more informed decisions much earlier in life. That's a big jump on things for them. And it's something that you could potentially give your children if, if you have kids, uh, or, or just take that leap yourself and say, wow, I can just do this and find a way to make your American dream come true now or really soon right? Start that action plan. What do you actually need to do? What barriers are there actually there? Try to identify, is there an actual barrier or is it just this mental fog of it seems hard? What do I don't know? No. If that's the only thing, go, right? Get that. There's always going to be that thing. That's never going to go away until you go. And then you're going to go, what was I worried about? What was this thing that was going to be so hard? I don't even know, right? That's exactly what happens to almost everybody. It just clears and suddenly it's all been very easy. Realizing that American dream is your opportunity to make yourself that much happier right now. So many people in every culture sit around dreaming of a world that they wish they could live in, that they, they wish they had. There's all these things that would make them happy, but feel like they're just out of reach. And realizing that they may not be out of reach at all, that it is just that the decision to reach out and grab them has not been made is a big deal. Take a moment. Stop and think. Is that your American dream? Is it within reach? Why not reach out and grab it? You can always go back, right? It's not a one-way trip. It is not a permanent decision, but it could be a permanent happiness right now within your grasp. Why not take it? Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. If you'd like to help support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. As always, if you'd post on social media, I'd really appreciate it. Facebook, Reddit, those kinds of things. They get the word out there quite a bit. And tell your friends and family, and I will see all of you tomorrow.